Hey you, it's JJ. Oh, I had the best conversation ever today with my pastor Marlon Hall from the Awakenings Movement. We had a chance to talk about faith. Um, some of the feelings that I'm having right now as I go through this transition from uh, working in the corporate world into entrepreneurship, uh, living in your purpose. And we also talked about how sometimes God asks us to do things that just don't quite make sense. And what do we do with that? Well, check out our conversation right here. So I woke up this morning frustrated and feeling some type of way because I'm questioning my faith. Mm. Uh, I'm going through a transformation, quit my job, quit what I believed was my security and decided to walk out on faith and do something I've never done before. I'm just out, out here, okay? <laughs> and I began to wonder about how much I really trust God mm. and how much I really believe that, you know, he's well, going to come through. Yeah. Why is it so hard for us to have faith? Faith is, like, intrinsic. Faith is woven into the fabric of what it means to be human. I mean, you have faith enough to sit in the chair, yeah. you know? I mean, faith is just a part of who we are. So it's not about us having faith. It's, we were born with faith woven into the fabric of what it means to be human. Really, it's about our capacity to hear the faith that lies within us. Mm -hmm. And to do that, we have to be a bit more quiet. Why? Because faith whispers in the hollows of the human soul. The problem is fear. And fear loud talks faith. Faith moves with ease in how it speaks to you. It's consistent, the voice is, of faith. But it's quiet. But fear is loud and is bossy and pushy. And fear tells you that you should not dare have faith because having faith makes you irresponsible. How dare you believe that you were born for more than just being on the radio station. You got a kid and y'all need insurance and you need this and you need that. Fear talks loud and fast, but faith is soft and sweet. And we allow our faith to be muted by our fears. But God wants us to be quiet enough, long enough to hear the faith that's been woven into the fabric of our very being to guide us into those places where only God can guide us. And, and, when, and when we allow fear to loud talk our faith, um, we domesticate our highest potential. Mm. And so you, you did work at a great job. Yeah. You did have great benefits. And there's more for you. Yeah. And oftentimes, now I'm not telling everybody to quit their job. JJ <laughs> was called to quit her, her work, her job to begin her work. Yeah. Um, to impact the world, but many workplaces, dude, are no more than domesticated spaces for people's gifts, graces, and talents. They're more like glorified zoos, mm. where um, you may be a beautiful giraffe with pretty long lashes, <laughs> and you can only gallop as much as the space that you are provided by the zookeepers. Yeah. And you may gallop your way towards uh, a 5% increase uh, every five years. <laughs> why they make a 50% increase every five months right, right. off of what you do when you gallop. Mm -hmm. But I believe that God has called all of us to live in the jungle of possibility, not bound by gates, not bound by fences, not bound by anything that would domesticate this divine passion that God places in the human being yeah. to do exceedingly and abundantly above and beyond anything that we can ever think, ask for, 401k in, <laughs> insurance around. Yes. God has a boundless possibility for every human being. Mm -hmm. And it's only when we sit still long enough to hear the soft, still voice of faith do we get unleashed into this jungle of possibility called life. So oh. you sat still long enough. Yeah. You know, and you've been telling people the story of how you went to the hospital. Yeah. And in the hospital bed, um, the Bible says, um, that God allows us to lay down in green pastures, to sit beside still waters. Your green pastures was a hospital bed. Yeah. And you were quiet enough to hear the soft, still voice of faith say, no more. Yeah. 
It's time to begin your life. That's good. I think there are a lot of people who wanted to leave their jobs. It's so interesting because the community that we are a part of, at some point, everybody's going to be like, <laughs> I quit, I quit, who's next? Like, I mean, we have a space full of entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. which is great. Mm -hmm. So we are around people who, um, who are risk takers, risk takers and who have an understanding of what their purpose is. That's right. But maybe there are some people who are, who are checking out this video today who don't necessarily understand how is it that they can do their passion um, or their, or, or, you know, walk in their purpose while making income. I understand. You can make meaning and money at the same time. So we, we have the privilege of hanging out with a woman whose name is Laura Nickel who I call an economist. She was a banker, but started her own business, a consulting firm. And she talks about the difference, Jillian, between economics and profit and loss statements. Mm -hmm. And she says that most successful businesses that continue to sustain success don't focus on profit and loss statements alone. They focus on good economics. And economics is the study of good decision-making. Profit and loss studies are the study of what you made and what you lost. She said, however, what we make financially and what we lose financially doesn't determine how a business gains in the marketplace. Yeah. There are a couple of things that do. Assets. She said, but finances is only one area of asset. Yeah. She said, there's reputational asset. There's intellectual asset, like your own idea, your own thought leadership. Yeah. She said, then there's network capital or assets, there are many different assets. And here's the kicker, right? She said that when we focus only on financial assets, financial assets can only grow themselves by a margin. But when we focus on all the other assets, your intellectual property that you can use to make assets, your network assets, the people you know, and what y'all can do together, and also your capacity just to kind of own who you are, she said those assets will grow your financial assets mm. by leaps and bounds. But when we only focus on the financial assets, they have a limit to which they can grow. But the other assets in our lives are limitless. And isn't that like um, God's way of doing things? The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, like all of these other beautiful assets yeah. that are more human. <laughs> and then the financial assets are gonna follow. Yeah. So I think oftentimes we chase money, hoping for meaning, but the reality is, is that when we seek meaning, money will follow. Mm, it will, good. every time. And it's not just me saying this because like I believe in the Bible or because I believe in God. Yeah. This is an economist saying that when any business only focuses on the profit and the loss of that business, they will lose over time. Wow. But when they focus on the full range of an asset, yeah that the people in the business are, yeah. they gonna win. That's good. Sustainably, over a longer period of time. So you said the profit and loss statement that I have with the budget of working for someone else cannot compare to the gains that I will have in humanity through my work, yeah. which is why the Bible says, what does it profit a woman yeah. to work at the radio station for all of her life but lose the soul of her work. Mm. That's good. That's good. It's crazy, dog. <laughs> it is. I feel like, um, you know, stepping out on faith, being in a place where you don't know what's going to happen, um, or even just having a, you, you may not have a clear understanding of what it is that God wants you to do. Like, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I find myself, and it's only been, it's not even been two months, but there are times during the week where I'm just like, God, what it sounds like you want me to do here? It just doesn't make any sense. I don't understand how that's going to put food on the table and feed this little kid that eats a lot. <laughs> so, um, has there been a story in the, in the Bible or a person that maybe sticks out to you where they had to go out and do what God asked them to do and it didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, shoot, like the Bible is made up of senseless stories. <laughs> yeah. um, this guy, he was the son of a carpenter 
And, um, and he had this amazing dream to like bring about human flourishing, for every human being to live into their uh, most significant purpose. Mm -hmm. And he believed that he had to die to bring that reality to life. And his name is Jesus. Yeah. And um, the good news is, is that we don't have to die to live into our purpose. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus died, we get to live to live into our purpose. But there was this one moment right before he was about to do what he believed would release human flourishing. And he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And while he was there, he was praying to God and he kind of doubted this big purpose. Yeah. And he said, hey God, listen, if you can pass this cup, like if I don't have to die so that humanity can live into its fullest purpose, then please, let's work something else out. Yeah. Like we, we <laughs> anything, let me know. Yeah. But then the Bible says that there is a comma. Um, and he said, but not my will, but thy will be done. And in that comma, I think was what Jesus needed to move through the pain and the doubt to move to the purpose and the destiny. Mm. And every human being has a comma. Yeah. It's just what are we filling the comma with? Are we filling it with doubt or destiny? Yeah. You had a comma. You chose to fill the comma, um, not with doubt, but with destiny. Mm -hmm. Not even with um, shame. Because yeah. dude, quite honestly, like, you probably felt um, you could be shamed oh, yeah. by making the decision to leave such a good job. Yeah. But yeah. you focused not on what you were leaving, but where you were moving. And I think that's what the comma represents too. Not focusing on what will be left behind, but what we're pursuing forward, you know? Yeah, that's so that's a perfect story for me about somebody who doubted, but what Jesus did with his doubt led to his destiny. Yeah. We need to bring back those what would Jesus do bracelets. What would Jesus do what with- What happened to those? Why did they go away? I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, I wonder if you could um, just briefly tell the people who are watching today who have no idea oh, this where is, to start. I get it. Where can they go with this? Like, my passion, my purpose, I don't know. No, I get it. I think there are a couple of things to quit before you quit your job. Yeah. One thing is to quit your relationship to comfort, mm. right? I think that We've been in a relationship with comfort that's not all that comfortable <laughs> for far too long. Yeah. And it's sort of like being in a relationship with somebody that you know you're not supposed to be in a relationship with, yes. but you don't want to have that hard conversation. Yep. You know, I'll just stick it's, it's just not working. Yeah, I'll just stick around. Yeah. And we stick around with comfort so long until we become comfort. Mm. Like we take on comfort's characteristics, but no human being was born to pursue comfort for a living. Yeah. In fact, human organisms grow through comfort to evolution. Mm -hmm. So like we wouldn't be the human beings that we are if like we were bound by comfort. No, nah, we progress, yeah. we grow, we evolve. So change your relationship to comfort because if you don't, comfort will consume you. Yeah. And comfort will take you where comfort wants you to go, to the mall to spend money instead of to your desktop to think about how you're gonna change the world. Right. So we have these jobs and we think that the money is gonna give us comfort and we buy a whole bunch of stuff that never satisfy the soul that longs to pursue true purpose. So first, quit your relationship to comfort. Break up, break up with comfort. Comfort, it's not working out. Sorry, bye-bye. <laughs> the second thing is, is risks. Like, we have to recognize that we live in a moment in human history and I don't know if you know this, but more people are losing their jobs or leaving their jobs than I've ever experienced in my adult life oh gosh, yeah. for the sake of purpose. And, and we live in a moment where it is risky to be safe mm -hmm. and safer to be risky. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there is more before you than there is behind you. Mm -hmm. And if we, um, if we understand that we have to give what we can't keep, to gain what we can't lose, we grow as human beings. What does that look like? You can't keep working at a job that you don't believe fulfills you. You'll die. Yeah. 
right? You can't keep that. So give what you can't keep to gain what you can't lose, a purposeful life. Yeah. Like who, who wouldn't want something you can't lose? Right, right. But we keep what we can't keep and miss out on having what we can't even lose, man. Mm. So those are the first two things to quit. Quit your relationship to comfort and quit your perspective on risks. Yeah. It's risky to be safe and safer to be risky if you ought to grow as a human being and certainly as a spiritual person. Yeah. Gosh, I don't want to stop. It's great. This, this is, is awesome. This yes, is good. this is great. But well, this is your life. I just want to stop and celebrate you for being, for embodying everything that God desired Jesus to be in the world. So when the Bible says, like, um, you should have the mind of Christ, like, you really have the mind of Christ. Oh, man, I don't know. <laughs> I do. Your mind says that a paycheck is not as important as your purpose. Yeah. That is the mind of Christ. And so thank you for being a leader and an inspiration to all of us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank High you. five. You're the best. You're the awesomes. Now, I want to invite people to come and, and hang out with us. They can. Uh, you know, Sundays, the lowest day. <laughs> around 10-ish is when the uh, service starts. 10-ish, yeah. 10 we have intentional community leading up to the time of worship. <laughs> it's not colored people time. It's intentional community. <laughs> yeah. It's about 10 15. So um, I would love for people to come. Maybe we can put up on the screen or something. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, it's up to you. Okay. Um, but thank you. Thank you for thank you. sharing. Thank you for Thanks inspiring for me. Yes, to be better. Uh, that was easy. You're, you're already the best. Inspiring you to be better is easy. <laughs>